this, please stand. Sure. I just have a question. Um, is there a timeline between like some like fifteen year old get this? Can like a six year old get this? Is there a timeline, or do you have to like go through certain stages in order to get to that point where you actually have to you know put your thoughts into action? Very I, good question. It's a great question. Thank you. I'm I'm working with one eight year old right now. And mm -hmm. it's simple. I mean, the kids only have to program their mind. I mean, they, they, have, um, they understand that they think in pictures. So if I can ask them, this little girl, Genevieve, you know, what kind of picture did you have in your mind? Where do you want to be in one year, ten years, or five years even? Um, what kind of tennis game do you want? What kind of grades do you want? Can what you kind see? of friends do you want to yeah. associate with? Right. Because I believe people could hold you back. Right. Oh, your yeah. old friends, your old patterns could oh, hold you back. My, when, when I wanted to go to the University of California at Berkeley, okay, I told this to my parents, and I didn't have the grades to get in there. I mean, not on paper, I did. Now, my, I didn't. I, had, you know, I didn't have the grades, honestly. I mean, I didn't bring my you know, former transcripts with me, but trust me. My parents had no idea that I, well, they didn't have any idea that I believed in myself. Uh, they didn't believe in me at all. They took me to see a psychologist. Mm -hmm. They really did. We went to see a psychologist to find out what was wrong with me. Um, and the psychologist ended up talking to them more than me. Exactly. That's what, that's well, what normally happens. Sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, my own parents were holding me back and they were, you know, they meant well. Yes. They didn't want me to, to have failure, but, mm -hmm. you know, there's either learning lessons. They were brought lessons. up in a certain way. There's right. patterns to be broken. I believe today the consciousness needs to evolve more. It is evolving yeah. rapidly. You have a question? <laughs> Well, I started Did you, studying... Excuse me. Sure. Did you all hear that? Yeah. Can you please uh, stand and repeat that question so everybody could hear you? I asked, what is it that you do? Right. What is your business, and how did you get there? What was your career path to get there? When I was, I was 18 years old, and I was an average tennis player, I got a hold of this material, started applying these universal laws, you know, ended up a top tennis player in New Jersey, went to Berkeley, uh, kept studying these universal laws under Bob Proctor, uh, mm -hmm. attended a lot of seminars, read a ton of books, and I sent him an essay and said, I'd like to come work with you to teach these ideas because uh, he's taken it to the corporate world uh, quite a bit. Prudential, Remax, uh, MetLife Insurance, Malaysia Airlines, mm -hmm. a lot of those companies. And it's been um, interesting because he introduces the spiritual concept to the corporate world, which is not an always the easiest thing to do. But to ignore that side of us would be to look at someone as incomplete. Um, and so, so he hired you. I, I became, I trained under him and certified under him and sometimes I work with him and other times like I'm working independently of him right now. So I work, yeah, I specialize in working with individuals, organizations, schools. I mean, obviously, you know, I'm only 19. Now I'm <laughs> but, uh, so I love sharing these ideas with the young kids because I know how lost I was. You know, I didn't want to get out of bed didn't really like myself, didn't understand my self-esteem and my self-image, mm -hmm. and when I changed the picture inside, mm -hmm. then I changed the outside. That's so. right. Kevin, that's a, that's a great point. Uh, I'd like to also ask a question. Uh, many of us wish for things. Uh, we imagine it in our head. We're almost there. We can almost grasp what we want, a new car, a new job, more money, happiness. Mm -hmm. uh, what stops those people? They're almost there, but They're almost there. Yeah, a They're not crossing that line. A lot of times when we intellectually say that we want something, we don't mm -hmm. deeply, subconsciously think we deserve it and believe it inside. Definitely. Um, and a lot of times we have those perceptions, you know, perception there that for me to earn a million dollars, I need to work 20 years of hard labor. No, not you. always necessarily true. <laughs> right. Um, but those perceptions can shift. Um, like my sister had a perception problem with... Um, dating guys. She said, there's only jerks out there. There's no good guys out there. And jerk after jerk after jerk kept lining up. I'm glad you mentioned now, that. Now, as soon as she changed her perception about that, she found one good one and she held on to him with her will. Now, he has no idea what he's in store for. And, he, <laughs> and he's actually Croatian, too. Oh, he's yeah, Croatian? He's Croatian. Whoa! Yeah. 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 Good people. But, but <laughs> our, perception can, our perception can change and we want to change that. The perception about what we're capable of doing, having, and being is changing, I think, now. Could I just need to ask you, what needs to happen for that shift and that perception to change? Like I said, the change of consciousness as the world, even the world in poverty, they are held back from their consciousness. They have to evolve. So, in other words, I, 
I'm answering my own question, yeah. but go ahead. At a certain level, I think you can ch you can release that yourself. Mm -hmm. um, Releasing. Through a positive affirmations, visualizing a vision board, um, mm -hmm. surrounding yourself with a like-minded uh, success group, positive. You um, cannot be with people that are, let's say, I don't like to use the word negative, but just for a lack of a better word, negative people, people that are going to hold you back, people that, uh, that might be gossipy, that right. deteriorate the soul. And, and jealousies and, and all those uh, little uh, negative uh, low energies, right. low energies. Yeah. So you have to surround yourself with positive people. Yeah, and you know, and if, if I would say, if you if you're having if you're stuck doing it on your own, mm -hmm. um, Kathleen, I think when she comes up is going to go into it a little bit deeper. Yes, and that's what you know. I know Kathleen that, is a good you know, coach. That's something else. Yes, so, yeah, definitely. she's going to really hit on that. But last question. I have a question, which is that the good doctor who was speaking before mentioned the influence of the parents on the children, and that has probably has something to do with how difficult it is to change. What are you, what are you about? Right. It's, um, a lot of times the kids do have some parents that don't exactly believe in what the kids are about. And mm -hmm. the, a lot of the problem is the, the ignorance of the parents, um, mm -hmm. for lack of a better word. They don't understand what's going on inside the child. Mm -hmm. Like a child with low self-esteem, shoulders slumped forward, doesn't look at you in the eye, they basically have a negative picture in their subconscious mind that's dominating their outer appearance. And the parent says, you know, straighten up, kid. Mm -hmm. You know, straighten up, look at me in the eye. That's not going to have people. a permanent change. Go ahead, get that's out That's not going to have a permanent change because the parents, we're not really, we don't understand what's going on inside. Mm -hmm. So that's why this, I feel this picture, to me, can help really explain it and then you can change. So. Does that answer your question, sir? Thank you. Uh, educating the parents is, is, I think, a big key. Yeah. Educating the parents. I heard that of dogs. You have to educate the dog owner, not the dog. Right, right. <laughs> Le one last thing, you know, when uh, little Rebecca, there's a story, little Rebecca was sitting in the back seat of a car. She leaned over to the front seat and the mom's driving. Now mom knows all the knowledge because she's the parent. <laughs> little Rebecca says, mommy, 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 where are all the dumb idiots today? <laughs> now see, mom knows all the knowledge, so she says, little, you know, Rebecca, sit back. You just relax. They only come out when your father's driving. <laughs> So that's where we learn a lot of those things at a young age from our parents who are just given to us and that that's we right. accept them unconditionally. So they are our programming and it's not our own authentic self. It's a responsibility to reprogram ourselves. Yes. Right. And we need to and we need to bring out the authenticity in the individual child. Right. Apart yeah. from uh, parents. But parents are good guidelines yeah, if they, they are. are if they yeah. are. Well, Dr. Carl Manager said environment is more important than heredity. Yes. And sometimes I share that the teenagers, some of them say, thank God, because my parents, if you knew what my parents were like. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you can change. See, anyone can reprogram themselves. So. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you thank very you. much. Let's have a round of applause for